ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌ ಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿದ್ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಅಪರೋಕ್ಷಾನುಭೂತಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಇನ್ ಮೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಕಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ವೀಕ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಸೆಗ್ವೆ we are on we have finished verse 16 and we are about to enter verse 17 and in verse 17 and the succeeding verses there is a calling out on part of the author about the common areas of mix up mix up between what atma and anatma so this atma and anatma the uh, anatma not i and the atma which is myself and that myself is not fully own, owned up even if it is known it is that knowledge of i as atma having a body mind sense complex is not fully understood or owned up or assimilated instead what do people say i you know i am a body mind sense complex with atma this is how the orientation is now in the succeeding four verses the author hopes that we will reverse this identification i am atma that happens to have a body <laughs> this is a very different way of looking at things i am a, a, a atma that is equipped with a mind i am atma equipped with the sense organs equipped with organs of actions or whatever you know all the accoutrements instead what we say this body mind sense complex has atma and then so therefore here the mix up is not totally resolved the mix up is still there it's not resolved and if it's not resolved why is it not resolved because there is a there is agnanam one and on top of the agnanam there could also be a habitual orientation i have a habit of identifying this because it's easy to identify as the body and then because i have shraddha i can say i am atma uh, you know i i have atma uh, atma is somewhere within it cannot be objectified etc etc so but that orientation still doesn't change the fact that i'm primarily thinking of myself as a body mind sense complex equipped with atma run by atma but still there the, there is a there is a difference and the difference always is uh, it's it's not just that there is a difference this difference is a difference based on the uh, mix up so the viveka the discrimination between atma and anatma uh, is is going to be pointed out here from three or four different standpoints in each verse and the author's hope is that there is a reorientation uh, about what is atma and an owning up of the atma as i so that there is not a that that mix up and that confusion between atma and anatma does not continue with these words we will uh, look at the text itself so this we saw aham ekopi sukshmascha gnata sakshi sadavyayah tadaham natra sandehah 
विचार सोयमी दृश है अयम अहम दैट विच इज कॉल्ड अहम इज एक वन वन आई इन मेनी बॉडीज एंड देर फोर सूक्ष्म मीन्स नॉन ऑब्जेक्टिफाइबल वी हैव सीन दिस दिस इज जस्ट अ रिविजन देन ज्ञाता द वन हु इज दी नोवर द विटनेस साक्षी and who is what does the sakshi know everything that is happening to the body the sakshi knows everything that's happening to the mind the sakshi knows the sakshi is able to uh, witness everything and so sat avyayah sat i am the unchanging indeclinable sat the sat means the source of existence that is what i am and there is no doubt about that at all this is how the vicharaha the enquiry self enquiry must be done now verses 17 to um 17 to 21 are going to talk about the mix up and uh, between i and not i and how to how to look at the i in a helpful way so that the not i does not preponderate and pervade so the, the this is why we we need these verses very beautiful verses let us understand atma vinishkalo hekah deho bahubhiravritah atma vinishkalo hekah deho bahubhiravritah तयोरैक्यं प्रपश्यन्ती किमज्ञात्नमत परम तयोरैक्यं प्रपश्यन्ती किमज्ञानमत परम लेट अस जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड द द वर्ड्स एंड देन वी लुक एट इट इन डिटेल आत्मा आत्मा इज आई सो व्हाट एम आई विनिश कलह वी प्लस निस प्लस कलह सो कला मीन्स पार्ट्स एस्पेक्ट्स वॉट एवर यू वॉन्ट टू से सो निष्कल मीन्स दैट विच डेफिनेटली हेज पार्ट्स विनिष्कल मीन्स that from which all parts have departed that which is of departed parts <laughs> funny to say but that is what it is trying to do here meaning no parts at all atma is that without any parts and how many atmas are there one he indeed there is only one even though it feels like many atmas many bodies there is only one atma the i in every one is just one that one i cannot be of the nature of body because it is got so many bodies and it is uh, as though endowed with so many bodies so many minds so what is this one consciousness awareness what we call awareness what that which makes you each person say i am i am i am that one so this atma is vinishkalah without any parts and therefore it is just whole and it is one and whereas what about the body deha by contrast is avritah covered the body is covered by what bahubhihi bahubhihi avritah covered by many things such as body you know mind senses so many things and then you can say even the you know hands legs they have so many parts each part lends itself to many many other parts and then the next line is very interesting 
tayoho aikyam prapashyanti prapashyanti prakarshena pashyanti they definitely see totally see who are they poodhaha deluded people deluded people doesn't mean foolish deluded deluded about what is i and what is not i such people see aikya oneness between what atma and anatma they see a mix up tayoho atma anatmanoho aikyam prapashyanti they see the oneness between atma and anatma and they are not convinced otherwise and then the author says kim ajnanam atav param this is going to be a, a refrain this is going to be a nice uh, what is that called um, chorus for the next four verses and so kim ajnanam atav param atav param means greater than this is there a kim ajnanam atav param is there a uh, ajnanam uh, ignorance that is greater than this can there be an ignorance that is greater than this that is the idea this is not the time to think oh let me think and tell you no 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 <laughs> it is a rhetorical question meaning there cannot be a greater manifestation of ignorance than mistaking the atma for anatma that is the that is what is called adhyasa atma anatma viveka atmani anatma adhyasa that is one kind of adhyasa and what is this adhyasa mistake adhyasa means projection mistake a projection because of a mistake is called adhyasa very famous vedanta word made famous by adi shankara in the brahma sutra bhashya so then what is the uh, what is it trying to say so the the uh, what is the adhyasa atmani anatma adhyasa in the atma atmani in the i the not i is projected and when the not i is projected on the i i mean it's funny to say in on etc because really there is no locus here but atma of course is an as though locus for all mistakes so uh, on the adhisthana that is the atma on that truth adhisthana the not i is projected and the projection of this not i on the i has disastrous consequences in thinking oneself to be a samsari atma is a samsari very very sorry atma is a samsari and then what as atma is subject to death atma is not uh, atma is not nitya atma is not eka the atma is as good as the body and the body dharma the attributes of the body mind sense complex are pervading the atma this is the mistake this is one kind of mistake atmani anatma adhyasa anatma projected on the atma that is mistake part a okay oh there is more you bet okay what is mistake part b <laughs> very easy you just reverse it atmani anatma adhyasa anatmani atma adhyasa that is the second part b of the mistake what is that that in the not i i buddhi in the not i i buddhi i buddhi means i orientation i thinking in the not i so what is not i body but then what how do people think of the body it is nitya it is permanent even if it's not permanent i race against time to quote and quote make it permanent i want to make it permanent i race against time to make it permanent and so what happens i'm always running away from myself trying to make the body permanent 
and then I want to make the mind permanent. So in everything that is impermanent, I attribute permanence. This is what is called Anatmani. In everything that is Anatma, Atma Adhyasa. The Atma which is Nitya, which is Purna, which is whole, which is limitless, which is Satchidananda Swarupa is is broadcast, is is portrayed, is projected onto everything finite, such as the body, such as the mind, such as the senses, and not just the body, mind, senses, such as everything that is surrounding oneself. Everything should be permanent. The house which I have purchased must be permanent, and this must be permanent. And the body must be permanent. And the other people that I love, their bodies also must be permanent. Their minds also must be permanently there. Nothing should happen to their body. This is also a mistake. Why? Because the Atma is one and the Atma doesn't have any parts. And then I am attributing the Atma Dharma onto the body which is Bahubihi. Avritaha, Bahubihi Avritaha means uh, besotted by many, many kinds of things. Bahubihi means all kinds of complaints, all kinds of mistakes, all kinds of attributes. This is attribute free. Attribute free. And then this, so the attribute free I. Is, uh, is endowed as it were due to one's ignorance by many many things many many things and then uh, so this is you know the um, Adi Shankara says elsewhere aghatita ghatana patiyasi maya the glory of maya is such that the impossible is 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 uh, happens impossible is possible because of that and so then it is this, so what is Atma? Consciousness. And what is consciousness? That which throws light is called consciousness. And then that which throws light is called consciousness. And it's what kind of a light is it? It is, it cannot be cut, it cannot be modified, it cannot be, it is not subject to being wet by dousing with water and it is, it cannot be made into parts. It is indivisible. So even though we say light, don't think of it as a real light. It's just that which lights up objects. So now the lighted objects are many. That which the Atma brings to light, those objects are many. But the Atma is one. It is all-pervading light of consciousness that brings everything to uh, to bring all the objects to light. Therefore, it is Vinishkala. It doesn't have any parts. Where, what about the body? Dehaha, uh, diametrically opposed. Bahubihi. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is, it suffers manyness, manifoldness, countless body, illumined by one Atma. One is Eka. Another is many. One is without parts. Body is full of parts. And so, but, you know, but in sleep we find that we are without the body. There is no body in sleep. There is no mind in sleep. There is no memory in sleep. And so, therefore, what? This is, this is something which is very interesting. That means I can survive without the body. In fact, I am happier without the body because I am not aware of all the aches and pains and all the troubles, etc. I am happier. And so therefore, this is what the, the sleep experience shows that I am Niravayavaha. I am without parts. Whereas the body is Sa, sa Avayava. Asavayavaha, the body is, uh, exists with parts, the Atma is partless, Atma is partless. 
and so that that is what adi shankara asks what kind of ignorance can be greater than this <laughs> meaning there is no other uh, ignorance that is greater than this when the atma is so much you know uh, uh, when when the atma is everywhere and when it is specially available to me in the form of the witness what do i do i still identify with the body is there a greater uh, ignorance than this and of course the answer is no next one atma niyama kashchantah deho bahyo niyamya kah atma niyama kashchantah deho bahyo niyamya kah tayoraikyam prapashyanti kim ajnanam tav param tayoraikyam prapashyanti kim ajnanam tav param these verses will go relatively quickly partly because we have uh, we are covering material which we have already uh, seen in other uh, contexts and secondly because the last line we have already done it's a refrain a chorus and so we don't have to keep uh, looking at that so here the uh, atma niyamakah niyamakah literally means controller controller and of course we have to take that uh, with some modification niyamakah and antascha means it is not it is sukshma and it is innermost atma is the inner controller so that's why the name the word for the atma is antaryami antasthishthan yamayati that which is within and then and then regulates that's a better word niyamakah regulator and what is the body bahyah it is outside objectifiable niyamyakah that which is controlled that which is constantly regulated it needs to be regulated and so this is a very important difference antaryami which is the atma yami means the one who who um, the one, not controls the one who regulates the one who regulates the body mind sense complex staying within it as it were not that there is a within and without but this is only from the reference point or the stand point of the body we say within and without there is no within here there is no without but this is just for the sake of um, explanation so that is why we say uh, uh, you know that is why we say that it is within because we don't see it we don't see the atma coming out with a whip and saying to the body get in line <laughs> do this do that we don't see that and so therefore what so therefore there is a uh, you know that the, therefore it is said inside you must not take it literally inside means if you you, you know if you conduct a post mortem on a dead body you will not find atma inside <laughs> okay so the inside is as though inside we because the mix up is with the body which is outside bakya so there are two points of difference that are pointed out one is niyamaka one is the regulator and the other one is an object of regulation it is regulated one is within in the sense that it cannot be easily or it i mean it cannot be absolutely objectified at all in any which way it cannot be seen it cannot be heard of it cannot it is not available for purchase it's not available to look at it's not available for inference uh, because it is the nature of the inferer it is the nature of the looker upper it is the nature of the hearer and it's the content of the seer all these things so therefore it is not available for any means of knowledge even shastra does not establish the atma shastra only removes the ignorance connected to the atma shastra does not establish the atma 
and because it is impossible to establish the atma and shastra need not establish the atma because the atma is self evident a self evident thing does not need to be established like you don't need a flashlight to point to it to the sun to establish the sun to objectify the sun because because the sun is there it is lighting up even the flashlight that you are going to use to objectify the sun and so this way the atma is is uh, antaha non objectifiable whereas dehaha bahya it is outside and also the body is outward <laughs> outward oriented it is a mover shaker it behaves like that but then eh, we don't see the inner propeller in the form of the niyamaka who is uh, who is uh, moving the atma so these two points are very again very beautiful so the uh, it's not that the atma is regulating or controlling anything meaning regulating means just by lending its presence sattas purti pradanena so it lends its presence and its sentience as it were and the mere presence of the atma makes the body come alive so the life or the sentience in the body is a borrowed sentience from the atma because it is lent by the atma and then the mind also shines in the borrowed light of the atma light means presence and sentience so the body by itself is what insentient and the mind by itself is what insentient and so the insentient body the insentient mind the insentient senses are all livened up lit up it's a permanent christmas like that it is always lit up <laughs> everywhere it is lit up the mind is busy uh, busy receiving things first the mind receives the light of consciousness so to speak the body receives the light of consciousness and then the mind here has the capacity the so mind since it is sukshma has the capacity to illumine other things and the mind also uh, uh, takes the help of the sense organs to in turn illumine other objects objects of sight objects of objects of uh, um, objects of uh, uh, perception objects of hearing etc and so the question that is asked is one is the lender okay who is the lender atma is the lender and then what is the body mind sense complex borrower how can the lender and borrower be identical can the lender and borrower ever be identical no like the like a king and a person begging on the side of the street cannot be identical the king uh, stops the chariot going somewhere and then takes out uh, some is in a expansive mood some uh, some uh, country the the northern country has just been conquered and the king can afford to be generous and the king is feeling happy and then what does he do he he says stop the chariot okay they stop the chariot and then what does he do he just gives a couple of gold coins to the to 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 the lackey and the lackey gets down from the chariot and he's the lackey is instructed to give it to the beg begging person how can the two be the same what what do they have in common nothing nothing at all if you look at it like this there is really no different no similarity at all the begging person is totally dependent upon the king in this instance or anybody who is giving so the beggar is the receiver and the donor is the giver and the lender and the receiver the lender and the borrower are completely opposite to one another the borrower is borrowing because the borrower cannot afford to lend 
simple, does not have the means to lend. And then looking at generally how life goes, the borrower will rarely become a lender. Once you borrow, one is mired in debt and then the interest and all these things. So rarely can one get out of this. And even if one is debt free, one cannot become, one is not rich enough to become a lender. So the borrower rarely turns into a lender. The borrower remains a borrower throughout life and the lender remains a lender. And so the two can never be the same. Two can never be the same. And so the, the, this one, niyam, niyamakaha and niyamyaha. Niyamakaha means the one who by its mere presence regulates everything, regulates the body temperature. So the Atma is not turning down uh, the thermostat, you know, in the summer. No, Atma is not doing anything. It just livens the body, enlivens the mind. And what does the, and the mind which is more sukshma than the body receives the impetus from the Atma to start thinking, yes, it is really, really hot. <laughs> and then what? And then it will take, the mind will take the body to a cool place. Even before that, there are certain self-regulating, what we call self-regulating mechanisms in the body, like sweating, perspiration, etc., to cool off the body. And then that also the Atma is not pressing a button for the perspiration to start or for the body to cool down by itself. Its mere presence and its intelligent presence is allowing that to take place because the body already is, is equipped for that. The body, which is a creation of Atma, is already equipped to regulate itself. Atma by merely enlivening the body, giving it the gift of sentiency and giving it the gift of being able to do what it is supposed to do, it's just, it's in its presence. The uh, everything manage, manages to run according to Ishvara's plan. Adi Shankara elsewhere gives a very good example. He says it's like workers. A whole lot of workers are there. We can make the example a little more modern. And I think in his example, they are polishing objects in the king's palace, in the basement, because everything has to be spick and span. So here, what happens? Here, in the, in the, in the traditional example, you know, so the, the polishing is going on, keeping on polishing, keeping on polishing, polishing, polishing. So many articles, you know, the gifts given by other kings, candle stands and diyas, you know, lamps and pots and other artifacts, all silver. And the silver, if you keep it for two minutes outside, gets tarnished, so to speak. And so all the workers are taking some solution and a rag and they are polishing. So in the beginning, they are polishing vigorously and then later on, little slowly, little slowly, then they start chatting with one another. And then the polishing, the, 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 the mouth takes over the job of the hand. The mouth is very, very fast. And then the hands are to a slow, almost non-existent pace. And then what? The kanchuka. Kanchukiya means the supervisor. Minister's assistant, the, the palace attendant, the one who is in charge of all the palace objects and accounts and all because nobody should, you know, take something <laughs> in their upper cloth and make off with it. So this one comes and as soon as he comes, immediately <laughs> polishing quickly, 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 quickly. What does the fellow do? Nothing. He has his own job and everything and one of his jobs includes going around and making sure that the things are being done. He doesn't do anything. 
He doesn't have to say, hey, you're slacking. He doesn't even have to open his mouth. He simply enters. And as soon as he enters, immediately the polishing goes on very quickly. And to take a modern version of this example, you can so, sort of think, you know, the, uh, what is that, the shop floor of a factory where something is going on. And again, the overseer, supervisor, quality controller, whatever you want to call the person, the regulator comes. His or her job is to just make sure things run smoothly. They are not going to sit and polish. No, they are not going to sit and do the work. They simply walk in and as soon as they walk in, things just pick up the pace. And similarly, <laughs> the Atma is exactly in the same situation. Atma just by its presence makes sure that everything is being done. And there is a major difference between the palace attendant and the Atma. What is the difference? The palace attendant can only come once in a while, <laughs> every half an hour or every 20 minutes or every hour. Whereas the Atma is always there. Aluptadrik. Eyes without eyelids. <laughs> always open. Does not even blink. Oh, I want to take a break. Sorry, no break. If you take a break, it will be a permanent break. If the heart says, I want to take a break, not permitted. Not permitted. And it is, it is, it is, uh, it is supposed to do what it is supposed to do. And the digestive system is supposed to keep the juices flowing. Suppose the heart does not, it's supposed to go lap, dub, lap. Maybe the lap is gone. Dup, dup. <laughs> One lap is missing. That too is part of the order. That is how it is supposed to be. Then you take the body to the doctor. Okay. <laughs> there is some arrhythmia or something that has to be taken care of. And so this, this is how it is. And the, exactly this is how it is. So, if supposing the digestive juices don't flow one day and then you say, oh, I don't feel good, stomach is upset, I think I need to fast. That is also, even the disorder is part of this regulation, this regulatory function. Disorder is also part of the order. So, the order doesn't mean everything has to function how you think it should function. Don't ask the question if Atma is supposed to be there and, and take care of all the things that are happening in the body-mind-sense complex, then how come I'm sick? You are not sick, okay? Body is sick. <laughs> so, <laughs> how come I'm having this problem? How come I'm having this sickness? How come I'm not, uh, uh, you know, it's supposed to run perfectly? This is perfect. For this particular body, at this time, the non-functioning of a particular organ is within the order. And if you go and complain to the regulator called Atma, hey, you tap it on the shoulder and say, hey, this is not part of the plan. Which you are supposed to, you are not supervising properly. You are supposed to supervise properly so that I don't have all these complaints. And Atma will look at, look at the plan. Maybe on a piece of paper, the plan will be there for this particular jiva. No, it is going according to plan. Wait, I'm dying here. Yep, that too is part of the plan. <laughs> and so, you are not dying. Body is going. <laughs> and so, this is the, this is what we mean by Niyamaka. Niyamaka doesn't mean it should go how you think what is perfect. You think perfect means you, you have to live forever. You have to have no uh, kind of distress in the body. You should never feel sorrow in the mind. You should never have any problems anywhere else. That is not the point. <laughs> that is not the point at all. However it is supposed to function, it functions. Because this Niyamaka is in uh, touch with many more orders. 
so the niyamaka is the the, the regulator keeps in mind the karmic order which enter, intersects with the physiological order of the body which intersects with the anatomical order of how the different organs are supposed to function so it's not so simple so that's why the shop floor analogy with the supervisor coming or the palace attendant coming and making sure the items are polished it can only go this far so we have to that is just a little example we just have to uh, use that to understand and the understanding has to exceed the example because the example is limited okay because in that which is the darshtanta that which is exemplified we have many more things here we have the karmic order why certain things don't function and that is perfect for this body for this body that ailment is perfect why because that is what is the part of the niyama it is the niyama it is niyati niyati means the order that is how the order is and so this is what it is and so atma is the regulator and the regulator is never regulated it is a non regulated regulator it's a non receiving donor <laughs> it's a non borrowing lender <laughs> and it keeps lending its awareness light so to speak consciousness to various all the things that it supervises from within so to speak because we are talking of something that is uh, that is as though uh, you know that that that, that, is, that that is that that is as though within an atma that is as though uh, illumining the body mind sense complex and regulating its functions from within we are forced to say within because we don't see any supervisor outside <laughs> you know with a pencil in the ear and a notebook and then writing you up for non compliance we don't see anybody like that we don't see any force like that either so we say that since the body mind sense complex is functioning with an invisible you know with with an invisible entity and in fact that invisible entity is you that conscious being is you that consciousness is you and that consciousness is illumining this body mind complex and making it function however it is supposed to function even the mind the chittam the memory all of it if you forget that is part of it if you then recall oh i have forgot but now i remember that also is part of the part of the plan so everything goes according to plan and then but how to understand this atma within you know, how to understand this thing because you see when you drop the body atma remains how do you drop the body in sleep every night you drop the body on the bed and then that's the last thing you know you have disidentified with the sthula sharira sthula sharira not there you have dropped the body and then what have you dropped the mind you bet you have dropped the body you have dropped the mind you have dropped the sense organs and still you know that you slept well when you wake up why because the one thing that you are not able to drop is the one that drops everything <laughs> which is the atma the dropper cannot be dropped and so that that one is atma and that keeps everything going even when the body is in a state of non action mind is in a state of inaction the senses are nowhere to be found even if the person's name is being called repeatedly in the person is in deep sleep like ravana's brother kumbhakarna in 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 deep sleep and so so therefore this is you know so that so so that means you know you don't have to go inside and see anything you can just use the sleep example that the presence of consciousness is enough to survive i am this consciousness 
because that is what links me through all the three states. That's why the avastha traya prakriya, the prakriya means the uh, mechanism, the pedagogy, the methodology of the three states of being, sleeping, waking, and what's the other one? Dreaming. That is very useful. Because what is it that inheres all the states? What is, who is present in and through? I, but not I as the waker. Not I as, because in, in sleep I am not the waker. Where the waking experience cancels sleep, the sleep experience cancels dream, the dream experience cancels the other two. So that which cannot be cancelled, which illumines all three experiences, and then which illumines itself as well, which is self-illumining, and it is, a, it is present, it is aware of its presence, and it illumines everything else. That which, which, from which you can never identify. You can disidentify with the sthula sharira, the sukshma sharira, etc. But you can never identify from the atma. This is all the proof that you need. That there is an inner being that is, that is taking care of everything. Inner, because it is taking care of all the happenings in the body-mind-sense complex. So, from the standpoint of the body, inner. From the standpoint of the samashti, it is outer and inner. It is neither out nor in, because there is no location. This is just still tvampada vichara. This is still an inquiry into the word I. And so, therefore, it is, uh, it is presented as antaryami. Antastishtan yamayati, staying within, so to speak, it uh, regulates everything. So this is the only proof you need. You don't need, uh, you know, any proof. Supposing we needed a proof that this consciousness exists, where are you going to go? You have to go in search of another consciousness to prove the existence of this consciousness. Another controller is needed to prove this controller. Then what? We are in a happy, uh, infinite regress. And what is this infinite regress? <laughs> then, the, how do we know that the other controller that I have just brought in, how do you know that one is final? What about that? Who is going to control that controller? So you need one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. And then you are in an infinite regress. So somewhere you have to stop. And then, this is where Shraddha comes in. Logic can take you so far. We use Shruti Anukula Yukti. We use a logic that is in keeping with the Shruti. And, and so that we can assimilate this better. So we can bring in other experiences like what? Like the waking, sleep, etc. And you can bring in uh, uh, all these experiences to understand the nature of this consciousness in the, in the role, in the so-called role of regulator, vis-a-vis -vis the body-mind-sense complex. The final proof that this consciousness is there is you. <laughs> Are you there? Yes. Okay, that means this consciousness is there. No, but I need another proof. How do we know that it is regulating? For that Shastra alone, Shastraika Pramanam. Shastra alone is the pramana. For that one has to have shraddha. No, but I don't have shraddha. Well, you know, cultivate shraddha. I don't want to. Okay, better luck next time. That's all we have to say. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Ma bhaishta, don't, don't be afraid. Next life will be there. You can cultivate you, whatever you want in the next life. If this life is missed, next life is there. Not to worry. Okay, yeah. Then, um, then uh, this one, uh, one more thing, you know, we have to see uh, what is that? The uh, Shruti Pramana. The Shruti Pramana is how it works, we have to see before we get to the next verse. Uh, the Shruti Pramana is just works through the mechanism called Shravanam. When you listen, in the beginning, the listening is with filled with doubts, filled with disbelief. How can this be the case? Why do I need moksha? How can this be the case? 
then if atma is regulating everything from within why do i feel bound where is the feeling of bondage located and and how to remove that all these questions come so the in the beginning those questions are entertained they are answered every prakarana grantha entertains these questions answers them also who am i this you including aparoksha anubhuti that is how it should how, how did i come here who am i <laughs> what is you know what is the body what is the mind what are the senses how is it happening and so therefore the um, uh, so therefore the uh, the divisionless non dual i which is in the form of consciousness which throws the light on the body which is full of divisions and then which is the uh, uh, which is the which is full of divisions this is what is established by the shastra and that i have to cultivate what is called trust to be able to see it what kind of trust not a belief but a trust pending understanding and then with the cultivation of this trust what happens the wonderful things happen i start understanding the truth of myself i start understanding the truth of myself and so that that is why the trust is needed because there is no proof for this inner regulator controller etc whatever you want to call now next verse hmm. you have to share this text one minute आत्मा ज्ञानमयो पुण्य देहो मंसमयो शुचि आत्मा ज्ञानमयो पुण्य देहो मंसमयो शुचि तयोरक्यम प्रपश्य किम ज्ञानमत परम तयोरक्यम प्रपश्य किम ज्ञान मत पर आत्मा ज्ञानमय स्वार्थे मयट प्रत्यय सो दिस मयट दिस मया इज अ सफिक्स दैट हैज मेनी मीनिंग्स एज वी आर सीइंग इन द तैत्री उपनिषद इट मींस मॉडिफिकेशन बट इट आल्सो हैज अ मीनिंग अनदर मीनिंग ऑफ nothing but itself so that is the meaning here swarthe in its own sense so gnanamaya means nothing but knowledge knowledge means that which that light of consciousness that knowingness which transcends the knower known division so when i say i am the knower then i am not the known and then i am not the means of knowledge but here i am that which illumines the knower without becoming the knower that which illumines the object of consciousness without becoming the object it illumines the subject and the object and the means of knowing sight sound etc without being any one of them that's why it is all pervasive uh, knowing principle it is the it is not a knower per se because knower is a status but that status uh, precludes other statuses so atma is nothing but knowledge a knowledge that transcends a knowing being that transcends the role of knower known and means of knowledge and it is punya punya means it is auspicious more we'll see about that how it is punya punya means it can never become um it can never become inauspicious so supposing the atma falls in a in in a vat of sludge it will not become sludgy <laughs> first of all it will not fall and atma doesn't need to be cleansed atma doesn't have papa so it doesn't need to do prayas chitta atonement kind of karma it doesn't need to do and what about the deha by contrast 
mam samaya and here maya is vikara it's a modification of flesh bones and all kinds of things and then what ashuchi hi by nature the body is not very clean <laughs> so oh but i took a shower today you may have taken two showers today that has nothing to do with <laughs> with whatever it is they say that if you shine the light of the microscope on just one square inch there will be so many viruses so many bacteria that you will feel like running away from your own skin that is why bhagavan in all his compassion has not given us the sight of a microscopic sight if anybody is wondering how come i can't see small small things be thankful you can't see small small things that is true and even as we age we cannot see small small things i think that is very nice because that means you have to clean the kitchen and other surfaces less so this is this is a good blessing so perhaps and and so this is so small small things you are not supposed to see you are not supposed to see them at all and so why because if you saw all the the all the bacteria that are contributing to to the uh, to, to this ecosystem called the body and by feeding off of it but what are they eating i just told you i took a shower there is all kinds of skin cells that you cannot see dry skin cells all kinds of things oil on the skin no but i never put oil but there is oil in the skin the skin comes with a natural moisturizer num 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 which the bacteria and the love they love it it is the bacterial food so if you look at the body through the microscope even one small little one square millimeter you will feel like running away all the things magnified and they all look very funny they have all this proboscis and they are going everywhere and you will never be the same again okay and so this is why this is why our, we don't see those things and even if you wash it will not go why because the water has even many more microbes water also has so many more microbes and so that is why you don't see you don't see anything at all and so in this way you know not being able to see one is spared but even even if one is spared in other ways one is in despair that's why there are so many things for the body perfumes fragrances deodorants all the things you go in the supermarket aisle and there is so many things just to make the body smell nice <laughs> there are so many things just to make the body smell nice that means what this this is a odor control odor management is a is a is a thing and so they have mam samaya mam samaya means an assemblage of flesh bones and all these things by nature ashuchi hi because it keeps excreting you know all the pores keep excreting so you have to keep cleaning the ears you have to keep cleaning the eyes you have to keep cleaning the nose you have to keep cleaning the mouth what to talk of all other orifices and then you have to keep cleaning the skin also because the skin also is 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 the largest excretory organ so when you think about all this you see, you you immediately say okay 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 let's talk about the atma <laughs> don't please don't belabor this point about the body <laughs> that is the whole idea <laughs> that you get instant vairagya from the body <laughs> when you hear about all these things and that is the exactly the intention uh, the, of the author here देह माम समय अशुचि अशुचि मीन्स कॉन्स्टेंटली फिलती 
you go go for shower come back again it is filthy and so therefore and then the, what is the atma never in atma is a great conserver it doesn't need to shop for products to make it smell nice it doesn't need to take a shower it doesn't need a towel to dry itself off it doesn't need a, what is that antibacterial wipes it doesn't need anything why permanently clean permanently free of dirt dust papa punya anything that you attribute to it it is free of that and so tayoraikyam prapashyanti how on earth who on earth can see the similarity between the two please tell me and is there a greater agnyanam than confusing the atma with the body more we will see next week Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaga Purnamevavashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om